الحمد لله وسلام على إباره الذين استفاء اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says speaking to his beloved الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين Mentioning Allah's relation to his beloved, he says the one who sees you, the one who watches you when you stand and watch your passage through those who are prostrate. One of the meanings of this verse According to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and this is a sahih tafsir from him, according to Al-Bazar, min nabi ila nabi hatta akhrajtuka nabiya. Your passage from prophet to prophet until I brought, forth, brought you forth as a prophet. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from prophetic ancestry. He is from the most noble of ancestry, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. As we mentioned the first thing in previous nights, as was mentioned, the first thing that Allah created was the light of that Prophet and He passed him into the loins or Allah uh, placed him into the loins of Adam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam descended to the earth in the loins of Adam. And he said that he rode the ark in the loins of Nuh, and he was cast into the fire of the loins of Ibrahim. And in some transmissions, he said, "Lam min al-aslab al arham Allah continued to pass me through noble loins to pure wombs. So one of the topics about our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam is the nobility of his ancestry and that he is of the highest lineage, the highest lineage of anyone walking the surface of this earth. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Abu Nu'aym transmitted from him Lam yaltaqi abawaya qat ala sifah. No two of my parents ever came together in fornication. Walam yazalilla yanqulani min al aslab at tayyiba ila al arham at tahira. And Allah continued to transmit me from pure or noble loins to pure wombs. Musaffan, muhaddaba in a state of purity, in a state of refineness. No two branches of my lineage split, except that I was in the better of the two. He also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in what Bukhari narrates from him, I was brought forth from the best of all ages of the children of Adam, age after age until I came forth from between my two parents. And as Shaykh Ibrahim Hafidhullah referred to, in the ages immediately leading up to the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sahbihi Wasallam, the world, even Arabia itself, even Mecca itself had fallen into jahiliyyah. It had fallen into ignorance. There were false notions about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There were 360 idols around the Kaaba itself. This is leading up to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. People were in a time of fetra. What is fetra? Fetra is a secession of the message between two messengers. So the 600 and some years between Isa and then Nabi Muhammad ﷺ, when there were many whom a prophetic message did not reach so that they would connect to the truth and to prophecy, so they lived in darkness. Those are people we call Ahlul Fetra. Ahlul Fetra. 
However, among all of this idolatry, within this time of jahiliyyah, of ignorance, there were people among the people of Fetra that were known as Hunafa. That's the plural of Hanif. People that remained on the religion of Abraham. And what is a Hanif from the meanings of Al-Hanif? Is someone who follows the religion of Abraham. So those who were on the religion of Abraham prior to the Prophet ﷺ receiving revelation and proclaiming revelation and bringing that time of Fetra to an end, to a time of Dawah, a time of Bulug al Dawah, those people were called Hunafa, those people were called Hanif, meaning those people who adhered to the way of Abraham. Another meaning from Hanif is Al Ma'il al Al Haq al Mustamsik Bihi. Al Hanif is someone, it comes from the word to incline, someone who inclines to the truth and adheres to it. So they also say, Hu al Ma'il al Islam al Thabit alayhi. He's the one who inclines to Islam and remains firm upon it. And there were Hunafa right up to the reception of revelation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. There were those who remained on the way of Abraham. And it is the contention of many of the great ulama of Islam. A number of the great ulama of Islam that all of the ancestors of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were Hunafa, that they were people who adhered to Islam. From their attributes, as Sheikh Ibrahim mentioned, was that they were monotheists. From their attributes is that they were people of noble character. From their attributes is they were people that believed in the hereafter. From their attributes was that they were people that made Hajj. From their attributes was that they were people who the Kaaba was their Qibla. And if there were Hunafa, if there were people who were Hanifs during the time, the generation of the grand, the generation of the father of the Prophet وسلم, Abdullah, and during the generation of the grandfather of the Prophet وسلم, Abdul Muttalib, and during the generation of the great grandfather of the Prophet وسلم, Hashim or the generation of the great great forefathers of the Prophet وسلم, such as Ilyas, such as Muldar, such as, such as Adnan, such as his forefathers, then how do we understand the saying of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that I was sent from the best of the ages of the children of Adam age after age until I came forth in the age from which I came. Think about that logically, and that is one of the arguments of the ulama. As Sayyuti made this argument following the likes of Al Fakhr al Razi. That if we know that there were always people on the surface of this earth that were people of Iman and people of Tawheed, right? We know that. There were Hunafa, there were people of faith and people of Iman. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us there will be people of Iman until the end of time on the surface of this earth. And the, the hour won't come until there's no one who says, Allah, Allah. So there were always people of Iman on the surface of this earth. And there were always people of Tawheed on the surface of this earth. And our Prophet ﷺ, he said in too many traditions to count, that the best people in each age were from his forefathers. ﷺ. Can it be understood logically that his forefathers were anything other than people of Iman and Tawheed? I was sent from the best of ages of Adam. No two branches in my lineage split except I was in the better of the two. So when you look at the forefathers of the Prophet ﷺ, and last night <coughs> Sheikh Ibrahim mentioned them to you, and we should know them because each of them was someone who the light of the Prophet ﷺ shone in his face. Each of them was someone that was a vessel that, pro that transmitted that Prophet ﷺ. Each of those wombs was a womb that Allah chose, a pure, chaste womb that Allah chose to be a vessel that transported the light of His love Prophet wasallam. Can it be understood logically that those people would not be from the, the choices of the believers on the surface of this earth? And then, and then, if we look at this meaning of fetra, 
And there's a meaning that we're alluding to. If we look at this meaning of fetra, people of a fetra, what is the ruling in the Sharia? How do we view people of fetra? Those of a time of ignorance, when there's a gap, a secession in the revelation so that a prophetic da'wah doesn't reach them, what is their ruling? Their ruling is that they're saved. What is the ruling of the people of Fetra? Their ruling is that they're saved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, He says in Surah Al-Isra, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ الرَّسُولًا Allah says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ الرَّسُولًا we do not punish until what? Until we send a messenger. We do not punish until we send a messenger. What does this mean? This means that a message reaching a given people is a condition for their taklif, a condition for their accountability. And for that reason, as Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim alluded to, the pin is lifted from them. Bad deeds are not written for them. Those are people who are saved. That's what we say about those immediately prior to the time of the Prophet The likes of this verse is what is qat'i. The likes of this verse is what qat'i. It's unequivocal. Verses of the Quran are unequivocal as proofs in the sacred law. So if somebody comes and they have a hadith that they, in, in their ignorance and their understanding, and it's what we call khabar wahid, it's a tradition that does not reach the level of tawatur. It doesn't reach the level of being unequiv an unequivocal text in the Sharia. If they have a, a tradition such as that, what type of proof is that in the Sharia? It's dhanni. It's probabilistic as evidence. So you can't bring a hadith which is probabilistic as evidence and use that to overturn, overturn an unequivocal statement in Allah's book. And Allah stated that the people to whom the da'wah did not reach that they are a people of, 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 of uh, and the absence of taklif and Allah doesn't punish them. So that is one of the arguments about the ancestry immediately leading up to the Prophet ﷺ. And you could apply this to the, all of the polytheists of Mecca. So how in the world would someone of muhabba, someone of love of Rasulullah, someone who celebrates Rasulullah, how in the world would he not apply this to the likes of the parents and grandparents of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if generally in the Sharia it applies to everyone of that time. However, if we look at the first argument that was made, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he taught us that they were the best of people. He taught us that they were the best of people. So wouldn't it make sense that the best of people would be from the parentage of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam, and then look at the attributes of the parents of the Prophet ﷺ and of the grandfathers of the Prophet ﷺ. And again, this isn't, this, this isn't the position of Abdul Karim, this isn't the position of Sheikh Abdul Karim, this is the position of Imam Suyuti. This is the position of Al Fakhir al Razi that all of those grandfathers of the Prophet ﷺ were Hunafa that they were Hanifs, that they were adhered to the religion of Abraham, that they were monotheists and not of those who deviated. So look at Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, he was someone who forbade khamar for himself. He wouldn't drink wine even in the time of ignorance. Who was the first one to go and seclude himself in worship in the cave of Hira? It was Abdul Muttalib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. Who was it whom Allah showed the vision of the name Muhammad? Abdul Muttalib and Amina. Who was it who when they said, when the Abdul Muttalib would meet the scholars of the Jews or the scholars of ancient Arabia as occurred prior to even the marriage of Abdullah to Amina. Prior even to the marriage of Abdullah to Amina, Abdul Muttalib was a man and he traveled to Al Yemen and he met one of the scholars of the Jews. And he saw in him, just as they would see later in his grandson Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa he saw in him the signs of prophecy. So he said, could I look at your body? Can I observe you? And he said, Let me, because again, he understood there would be signs that he would see. Is this man carrying the last prophet or not? And Abdul Muttalib, how did he respond? And again, this is the response of Abdul Muttalib during the age of Jahiliyyah. 
during an age when people would circumambulate the Kaaba naked, this is the nobility of the bearer of the light of Al-Habib So he said, you can look at me as long as you don't look at my aura. As Shaykh Ibrahim said, Tabaraj al Jahiliya, exposing yourself in ignorance, the grandfather of the Prophet, even in the times of the ignorance, wouldn't expose himself. You can look at me as long as you don't look at my aura. And he looked at him and he, and he said, I see in one of your nostrils prophecy and in the other sovereignty. You are a person of authority and you are a person of prophecy. And he knew he was from Banu Hashim. He said, But this is Ajib. We only find this in Ben Zuhra. We find this carriage of the message in Ben Zuhra. Do you have a wife from Ben Zuhra? He said, No, I don't. Right? He had a wife, but he didn't have a wife from Ben Zuhra. So, what did this Jewish scholar tell him? He said, When you return to Mecca, marry from Ben Zuhra. Marry from Ben Zuhra. Why? Because he can see this great man, this radiant man, this chaste man. This believing man is bearing the light of the last prophet and that must be transmitted to that pure womb of someone from Ben Zuhra. So go marry from Ben Zuhra. So he returned and he married from Ben Zuhra. And when it came time for Abdullah to marry, he married him to Sayyidatuna Amina from Ben Zuhra. So for this reason, Ibn Abbas said that the, the Quraysh would say that Abdullah beat his father to it. That he was the one who got to be the vehicle that eventually planted that light of the Prophet ﷺ into the womb of Amina from Ben Zuhra. Abdul Muttalib, look at his Imam. Look at his Imam and his tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Abraha came to destroy the house and captured and despoiled the camels of Abdul Muttalib, and Abdul Muttalib went to meet Abraha, and in some of the narrations, Abraha had his great elephant Mahmud that was a white elephant and the largest of them. And this is an army that is unwithstand, that hadn't, couldn't be withstood by the various tribes of Arabia. Abraha ex showed that elephant to Abdul Muttalib as if he was going to intimidate him. And this elephant Mahmud, and he was Mahmud. He was Mahmud, he had a portion of his name, he had a nasib of his name. He saw the light of the Nabi Muhammad وسلم, in the face of Abdul Muttalib and he prostrated for him. And Abdul Muttalib and Abraha met and he negotiated with him. And, and Abdul Muttalib, when Abraha saw him, he respected him and he was up on a sarir, he was up on like a raised couch. And he saw him as an honorable man and he could see the, 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 the station of this man. He didn't want to place him beneath him and he didn't want to bring him up to his place so he sat with him and began to negotiate. So Abdul Muttalib he mentioned, you know I have 200 camels in a narration 400, you've despoiled them, I'd like my property to be returned to me. So what did Abraha say? He said, you know, we, we revered you when we first saw you but now we're indifferent to you. Zahidna Minka, how in the world did you come to me to negotiate about your property when I'm going to demolish the house of worship that is your nobility and that of your forefathers and he spoke in that deep Iman. A deeper Iman than the likes of some of us might show after the time of Tishriya. He said, I am the Lord of these camels. I am the Lord of these camels and that house has a Lord that will protect it. So then he went into Mecca and he sent the people into the hills so that the, if the army entered, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't mistreat the people and they wouldn't do the type of violence that an army will do when they enter a place. And he went and he held onto the door of the Kaaba and he called out to who? He called to Allah. He didn't call to Hubba and he didn't call to Allah and he didn't call to Uzzah. He called to Allah, he said, Allahumma, oh Allah, everyone protects your ho their house, so protect your house. And he called to Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and then went himself to the hills and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that army that destroyed the elephant or destroyed the, uh, sent those birds that destroyed the army of the elephant. And then after he married Abdullah to Amina and Abdullah is who? al dhabih right? He was the one who was to be slaughtered just as his forefather Ismail was to be slaughtered. And he was to be slaughtered for 100 camels. And Abdullah, the light of the Prophet ﷺ, shone in the face of Abdullah. 
And Abdullah would be seen by the women of the people of the book and they would know that this young man is carrying the light of the last prophet. So he passed by again, a Jewish woman who had read the scripture and she saw Abdullah. And she saw in his face that light and she tried to seduce him. She said, I'll give you 100 camels. I'll give you the same camels that were sacrificed in your stead in exchange for you and I being alone or for your having intimacy with me. And what did he say? He responded as the way of the Hanif would be with makaram al akhlaq He said, Ammal haram falmamatu dunahu al hillu wal hillu la astabinahu fa kayfa bil amr alladhi tabghinahu yahmil kareem dinahu wa irdahu. He said, as for the haram, and again, this is Abdullah, this is prior to their being reminded of the details of the Sharia, but on that Hanafiya and on that makaram al akhlaq Abdullah, the father of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as for haram, I'd rather die than doing that. And he said, I don't see this as being halal and I have to seek the clarification of, of this ruling. As for the thing that you're seeking from me with that, how can a noble man protect his deen and protect his honor? That was Abdullah and he was the bearer of that light. And after the marriage between Abdullah and Amina, he saw this woman again and she ignored him. She ignored him and he said, you know, why is, what's the difference? You know what's with you? Last time you were like this and this time you were like that. She said, I only wanted the light that was in your face, but Allah refused except to place his message where he willed. So that light of the last Prophet وسلم, was passed on to Amina, who's who? Amina bint Wahab bin Abdi Manaf bin Zuhra. Amina from the tribe of Zuhra the most noble of the young ladies of Quraysh of her time. And wouldn't she be? Wouldn't she be? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mother of Musa someone who received wahi. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mother of Isa that great Siddiqa Maryam in the Quran. What do we think about the mother of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? How would Allah choose for his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? The learned say, and as Shaykh Ibrahim alluded to, that ancient space, that ancient house upon which is erected the Kaaba was the first of the earth to form. And it's the, the earth from which Al Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, and with the flood, some of it is moved to Al Madinah. So the place in which he is buried in al Madina al Munawwara is Meccan and Madinan. And they say that of all the heavens and the earth, in the heavens and the earth, the throne, the kursi, everything, what is the best space in the heavens and the earth? The best space, the best plot of ground in the heavens and the earth. And this is by ijma of al ulama, this is by consensus of the scholars is the plot of ground that holds the blessed body of an Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And again, that's by consensus. That's the likes of Ibn Hajr al-Haytami and others. Tayyib, so if that is the nobility of the ground that houses his body now, so what about the nobility of the womb in which he was formed sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So that light of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was translated through all of those Hunafa to that great Hanafiya Sayyidina Amina bint Wahab. And then she starts to experience various types of Ilham, various types of angelic experience. And who experiences the angels? Who are of a station of Yaqeen that the unseen for them become seen as Siddiqeen? Right? The Nabiyeen was Siddiqeen. Those are the people of the station of Haq Yaqeen. Right? They have Ilm Yaqeen, Ayn Yaqeen, and Haq Yaqeen. Haq Yaqeen is the highest of those levels of Yaqeen. That is the level of Yaqeen of a Nabiyeen was Siddiqeen. And for them, the seen, the unseen is seen. So when she carries the light of the last Prophet, وسلم, the unseen begins to become seen to her. Angels visit her in her dreams. Speakers come to her in their sleep. They say to her, did you feel, did you perceive that you have conceived the best of creation? 
They say, أُعِيذِهِ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَرِّ كُلِّ حَاسِدِ Seek refuge in Allah for him from the evil of every envier. They say when he is born, name him Muhammad. The angels attend his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Siddiqat of Nisa, like Asya and Maryam, attend his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's visited during the various months of his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. When, she, when he's born, she sees a light. Amina radiallahu anha sees a light when he's born, and she says, or they, the narrators say, and this is Sahih from, from them, and Ahmed and Hakim and Tabarani, or Ahmed and Hakim and Bayhaki and others, that it's Sahih that when he was born, his mother saw a light from which the palaces of Sham were illumined. When Halima Saadiya brings him back, after his fifth year, when the first splitting of his chest occurs, and they say, we're afraid he's been possessed. We've afraid he's been inflicted by the jinn. What does Amina say? Don't worry about this son of mine. Don't worry about this son of mine. This son of mine is going to have a great affair. Right? Because she knew. She knew that she was the carrier of Allah's message. And she was ala al Hanafiya. She was upon the religion of Abraham. And she ordered her son to remain on the religion of Abraham sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So what did Sayyidatina Amina say when she was passing in that fifth year of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life when she was dying at that place called Al-Abwa? It's narrated by Abu Nu'aym from the way of Az-Zuhri from a woman um, Sama'a bint Raham from her mother. She said, I witnessed Amina I witnessed Amina in the, her fatal illness and Muhammad was a little boy of about five sitting at her head and she looked in his face and she said these lines of poetry to him she said six lines of poetry to him she said baraka fika allahu min ghunami ya ibn alladhi min hawmati al himami naja bi'unat bi'un al malik al min ami fudi ghudat al darb bi al sihami and basically said, how blessed you are, what a wonderful boy you are, you are saved by Allah the King, the, uh, the Beneficent, you're the son of the one who was saved by the King, the Beneficent, from being sacrificed, and instead 100 camels were sacrificed in his stead, mentioning, uh, mentioning the life of Abdullah and the sacrifice that occurred in his stead, and then what does she say? إن صح ما أبصرت في المنام فأنت مبعث مبعث إلى الأنام. She said, if what I have seen in my dream is true, you will be sent as a messenger to all of humanity. Who said this? Said it's an Amina. That Hanafiya to who? Little young Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. You will be sent to humanity. من عند ذي الجلال والإكرام تبعث في الحلي وفي الحرام. You've been sent by Dil Jalali wal Ikram. You will be sent, as he said, a messenger was sent to his people and I was sent to humanity in its entirety. She said, you'll be sent within and without, inside and outside of the sacred precinct. You'll be sent to all of humanity. You'll be sent with what? With truth and with Islam. And what is a Hanif? Al Ma il Islam. Someone who inclined to Islam and remained firm on it. She was so firm in her Islam at the time of death that she told her son, You will be sent with the truth and with Islam, which is what? Dini Abi Kalbari Ibrahami. You will be sent with the religion of your father Abraham. She said, And I, Allah, Allah, I remind you of Allah, O young Muhammad. I prohibit you from worshiping idols. I prohibit you from worshiping idols. And la tuwaliha ma'al akwami. And you do not show them allegiance along with the other people. And this is another meaning of the Hanif. Al ma'il. Al ma'il an ma'alayhin nas. Al mustaqim al al haq. The one who inclines away from the ignorance, the likes of what Sheikh Ibrahim described, the ignorance of the rest of people and adheres to the truth. And that is Amina bint Wahab 
the, the mother of an Nabi Muhammad, and then she said her final words, every living thing will die, every new thing will grow old, every great thing will perish. I am dying, but my remembrance will remain. Surely I have left something, someone who is good, and I have given birth to someone who is pure, and then she passed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon her and mercy upon the forefathers of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam on our behalf with the best uh, that he rewards any prophet on behalf of his messenger. And there is just one last point that we'll conclude. And Imam al Suyuti, he listed a number of positions with respect to the forefathers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, from the most... Um, from the, 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 the most beautiful opinions of them was what we mentioned, that all of them were Hunafa, that all of them were Hunafa, and that was his position, and that was a position of great, like a Fakhr or Razi. Um, and from the positions he mentioned was that position of Ahl al-Fatra, the minimum, the minimum, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ وَرْسُولَ we don't punish until we send a messenger. There are people who came prior to the, uh, the coming of the messenger, and then he said, for someone who's unable to do that, he mentioned a, a position of Qadi, uh, Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi. He was asked about someone who spoke ill of the Prophet's parents, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And what did he say? He's mal'oon. He's cursed and he may not say that. He's cursed and he may not say that. And the, 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 uh, the shaykh who recited in the beginning, he recited uh, the verse for that, that the one who hurts Allah and his messenger, then he is cursed. And you can't hurt me more than for you to say that my parents are in the fire, waliyadu billah ta'ala. So someone who can't have that view that they're hunafa, and we should have that view, and we're happy to meet Allah's messenger with that view. And can have that view of Ahl al and can have the view of at least refraining from judgment, the least he should say is have adab with Allah's Messenger and not hurt Allah's Messenger and state his position. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Please excuse me.